Today's class is on analgesics, more specifically opioid analgesics. First we will define the term analgesia and then go on to the different types of analgesics that are used. Pain. As you learnt in physiology, pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience which is associated with actual or potential tissue damage or is described in terms of such damage. What does an analgesic do? Analgesics are drugs which relieve pain without altering consciousness. Two broad categories of analgesics are the opioid analgesics and the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs also known as NSAIDs. Today's class, the first of these two lecture series is on opioid analgesics. We will define the terms opioid, opiate and then move on to the prototype. Opium is obtained from the unripe capsule, the latex which is obtained from this plant, Papaver somniferum. Chemically, it has two groups, phenanthrenes and benzyl isoquinolines. The phenanthrenes include morphine and codeine. Benzyl isoquinoline series includes papaverin and noscopine. These are natural. Morphine is named after Morpheus. In Greek mythology, Morpheus is the Greek god of dreams. The word opium in Greek means juice, referring to the latex of the unripe capsule from this poppy plant. Opiate is the term used to describe any drug that is extracted from opium. The word opioid refers to natural or synthetic drugs that bind to opioid receptors and produce agonist effects. The classification of opioids or opiates, we can classify it in two different manners. One is based on the source and one is based on the agonist or antagonistic effect. Based on the source, we have naturally occurring that is morphine and codeine. Semi-synthetic include heroin and felcodine. And the synthetic opioids include pethidine, methadone, fentanyl and tramadol to name a few. Now based on receptor action, the opioids could be pure agonists, mixed agonist antagonists or pure antagonists. Morphine, pethidine and fentanyl are pure agonists. Partial or weak agonist, example buprenorphine. Mixed agonist antagonists include malorphine and pentazosin and finally we have pure antagonists namely naloxone, naltrexone and nalmifane. Opioid drugs act through opioid receptors. Now what are the different subtypes of receptors and where they are present? New opioid receptors which are present at both spinal and supraspinal levels are involved in physical dependence, euphoria, analgesia at the supraspinal level and an important adverse effect, respiratory depression. The kappa receptors are involved in producing sedation, analgesia and meiosis. The delta receptors present at both spinal and supraspinal level are involved in producing analgesia and at the central level they also have an influence on the release of growth hormone. Morphine is the prototype opioid analgesic. So we will discuss in detail the pharmacology of morphine and how the other drugs differ from morphine. The mechanism of action of morphine is it binds to the opioid receptors namely mu, kappa and delta at both spinal and supraspinal levels. By binding to these opioid receptors, morphine reduces the intracellular calcium cyclic AMP levels and also interferes with ion channels. These two effects result in altered neurotransmitter release both at the spinal and supraspinal level. Now what are the effects of morphine? We can study the effects of morphine under the following heads. On the central nervous system, morphine has both stimulatory and depressant effects. The depressant effects are analgesia, sedation, mood and subjective effects, 
depression of the respiratory center and the cough center and the vasomotor center. The stimulant effects on the CMS include stimulation of the chemoreceptor trigger zone which results in nausea and vomiting, stimulation of the edinger westphal nucleus which results in meiosis, felines and ungulates that is cats, tigers, lions, horses. These animals show what is called a species variation that is these animals are stimulated by opioids. Morphine produces analgesia especially if the pain is dull, poorly localized and visceral in origin. The relief of pain produced by morphine is dramatic in these conditions and even today is the gold standard analgesic for visceral pain. Apprehension associated with pain is decreased. The autonomic effects associated with dull visceral pain is also decreased. An important part of the analgesic effect of morphine is what it does to the emotional component of pain. Pain is perceived but is not unpleasant. Both these actions are at the spinal and supraspinal levels. Morphine produces sedation, that is it calms the person, person shows lack of initiative, there is mental clouding, person under the influence of morphine feels a pleasant floating sensation, described using terms such as rush, kick or high. This is what causes morphine to become a drug of abuse. All this is attributed to dopamine release in the nucleus accumbens. Morphine is a very powerful respiratory depressant and is dose dependent. Higher the dose, greater the severity of depression. This is also associated with a decrease in the sensitivity to blood carbon dioxide. Blood levels of carbon dioxide are powerful respiratory stimulants but morphine by decreasing the sensitivity of the respiratory to center to carbon dioxide further produces respiratory depression. In case of opioid or morphine overdose death is due to respiratory failure. Morphine suppresses the cough center and this is described as anti tussive effect. Now morphine though has antitussive property is not used as an antitussive because of its abuse potential. This is a 2 or a 3 mark question in your exams. By depressing the thermal regulatory center, morphine produces a drop in body temperature that is hypothermia. By depressing the vasomotor center, blood pressure is decreased. Now coming to the stimulant actions of morphine. Chemoreceptor trigger zone is stimulated resulting in nausea and vomiting. This is one of the earliest features of morphine or opioid overdose. edinger westphal nucleus is stimulated resulting in meiosis. Now this meiosis is one of the clinical signs of opioid overdose. Vagal center is stimulated resulting in bradycardia. Morphine inhibits the release of LH, FSH and ACTH. A very important effect of morphine on the cardiovascular system is morphine shifts blood from pulmonary to systemic circulation due to peripheral vasodilatation. This is an extremely important effect in the treatment of left ventricular failure. Tone of the blood vessels is also reduced so there is peripheral pooling of blood. Now because of an increase in carbon dioxide levels in blood, intracranial tension increases because blood carbon dioxide levels are powerful cerebral vasodilators which is dangerous in head injury. <coughs> like we said earlier, stimulation of the edinger westphal nucleus produces meiosis. Now, Meiosis and increased intracranial tension are dangerous in head injury because 
pupillary signs are important in making a diagnosis of the site of lesion in head injury. Effect of gas on the gastrointestinal tract. Morphine produces what is called spastic constipation. That is, there is an increase in the tone of the GI smooth muscle, but motility decreases. Loperamide and dextropropoxyphen, which are opioid derivatives, are used as anti-motility agents. That is, they decrease gastrointestinal motility. And tolerance to this effect does not develop. Effect of morphine on the biliary tract is clinically important. In biliary colic, the pain is severe and of visceral origin. If morphine alone is used, pain may be relieved, but the sphincter of body contracts, which can result in rupture of the gallbladder. Therefore, atropine is combined with morphine in the treatment of biliary colic because atropine relaxes the sphincter of OD and morphine will relieve the pain. Morphine causes urinary retention and another clinically important effect of morphine is it can cause histamine release which is dangerous in a patient with bronchial asthma because histamine is a powerful bronchoconstrictor. Therefore, Morphine is contraindicated, should not be used in bronchial asthma. Pharmacokinetics of morphine, that is its absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. Morphine has an oral bioavailability of 25-30%, to 30%, is metabolized in the liver, sulfate conjugated and excreted in urine. Though the plasma half-life is 3 hours, the effects, pharmacological effects of morphine last for up to 6 hours. Morphine crosses the placental barrier. Therefore, if a pregnant woman takes morphine or is, in, or is abusing morphine, this can result in neonatal apnea and can produce withdrawal symptoms in the neonate. Coming to the adverse effects of morphine, they are an extension of its pharmacological effects. Like we mentioned earlier, morphine is a powerful respiratory depressant, produces sedation, mental clouding, vomiting, spastic constipation, respiratory depression, we mentioned earlier, blurring of vision, urinary retention and hypotension. Idiosyncratic reactions and allergic reactions, especially due to histamine release in the form of skin rash, urticaria, itching and swelling of lips. Apnea in the newborn. Tolerance develops to most of the effect, adverse effects of morphine. Morphine is a very powerful drug of abuse. It produces dependence. Narcotic overdose is quite commonly encountered, especially among the opioid addicts or persons who abuse the opioids. The diagnostic triad. How does one clinically make a diagnosis of narcotic overdose? The triad includes pinpoint pupil, that is because of stimulation of the Edinger westphal nucleus, respiratory depression, the respiratory rate could be as low as 2 or 2 to 4 per minute, and global CNS depression resulting in coma. Please make a note here. Due to prolonged hypoxia from respiratory depression, a patient, unconscious, comatose patient may present with dilated pupils. This respiratory depression is reversed with a narcotic antagonist, namely naloxone. Treatment of morphine poisoning is important not only from the clinical point of view, but also from the examination point of view. It is a five mark question. Extremely important. Respiratory support. Put the patient on a ventilator. Morphine produces hypotension. Therefore, blood pressure has to be maintained. Gastric lavage with potassium permanganate because potassium permanganate will oxidize whatever unabsorbed morphine is there in the stomach and make it non-absorbable. The specific antidote for opioid or morphine poisoning is naloxone. 
given intravenous 0 0.4 to 0.8 milligrams repeated every 2 to 3 minutes till respiration picks up now naloxone has a shorter half life compared to morphine therefore it needs to be given for at least up to 6 hours some of the precautions with morphine if an antagonist is used in addicted patients it may precipitate withdrawal symptoms these are some important contraindications for morphine or opioids opioids should not be used in head injury due to the following reasons opioids interfere with pupillary reflexes remember it stimulates the edinger westphal nucleus causes meiosis respiratory depression dangerous in head injury because already intracranial tension is increased cerebral vasodilatation can further aggravate the increased intracranial tension which can be lethal use of morphine in pregnant women leads to addiction of the developing fetus because morphine elimination is dependent on both the kidney and the liver use caution and dose adjustment in patients with hepatic and renal disease Morphine is contraindicated in bronchial asthma for two reasons. One, histamine release, bronchoconstriction. Second reason is respiratory depression. Morphine is contraindicated in undiagnosed abdominal pain. Reason, now let's say a patient has a perforated peptic also or a duodenal ulcer and is bleeding internally. If morphine is given without making a proper diagnosis, the pain may be relieved but the patient will lead to death without any symptoms. As we described earlier, morphine is contraindicated in head injury because it raises intracranial tension and also causes respiratory depression. Relatively less severe conditions like hypotension, hepatic and renal disease, mentally unstable patients, patients with known history of hypersensitivity and in extremes of age because both hepatic and renal functions are compromised. Coming to the uses of morphine, we said earlier that morphine is the gold standard analgesic for relieving dull visceral pain. So this is used in traumatic pain, visceral pain, ischemic pain, post-operative pain and terminal cancer pain. Morphine is also used in pre-anesthetic medication. Morphine is even today one of the gold standard drugs in acute left ventricular failure which could be due to myocardial infarction. Morphine is also used in patient controlled analgesia that is in a patient with terminal cancer pain not fit for cancer therapy, chemotherapy or radiation therapy or surgery. Like we said earlier, the role of morphine in acute left ventricular failure. Morphine causes peripheral vasodilatation, therefore reduces preload, therefore reduces work done by the left ventricle. Morphine shifts blood from pulmonary to systemic circulation. It allays or reduces the air hunger by depressing the respiratory center. And morphine by decreasing sympathetic tone calms the patient. When morphine is administered in a patient with left ventricular failure or myocardial infarction, an antiemetic should be administered because morphine stimulates the CTZ. Now coming to the derivatives of morphine or the synthetic opioids, we will see how these drugs differ from morphine. The first drug we take a look at is pethidine. Is less potent than morphine and has the same efficacy. Less potent means on a weight to weight basis more pethidine is required to produce the same effects as morphine does. Compared to morphine, pethidine has a quicker onset of action and a shorter duration of action. Morphine duration of action was up to 6 hours. Pethidine has a duration of action of 3 to 4 hours. 
Sedation, euphoria and respiratory depression are similar to that produced by morphine. Cough suppression or the antitussive effect of pethidine is less compared to morphine. It does not have spasm any significant spasmodic action. You remember we said morphine causes contraction of the sphincter of body. Pethidine is less likely to do so. Compared to morphine, pethidine causes less histamine release and clinically though not significant for academic purposes, pethidine also has local anesthetic action. The adverse effects or side effects of pethidine include whatever we have seen with morphine except for the spasmogenic effect that is the effect on sphincter of OD and spastic constipation. Pethidine has atropine like effects. You remember we com combined atropine with morphine for biliary colic. Whereas pethidine alone can be used because by itself pethidine has atropinic effects. Tolerance and, develop, tolerance and dependence develop but it is slow compared to morphine. In case of overdose, unlike morphine which produced CNS depression, initially excitatory reflex, uh, effects are seen with pethidine. Tremors, midriasis, hyperreflexia, convulsions, etc. Coming to the uses of pethidine. As an analgesic in visceral pain, traumatic pain, fracture bone, pethidine can also be used in pre-anesthetic medication and most importantly in obstetric analgesia, that is at the time of delivery. Because pethidine is more plasma protein bound, it is less likely to cross the placental barrier and produce effects on the newborn. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid which is chemically related to pethidine and is about 80 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Quick onset and short duration of action, that is its effects last for just 30 to 40 minutes compared to the 6 hours of morphine. Effects of fentanyl compared to morphine on the cardiovascular system and histamine release are less. Fentanyl is used as an opioid analgesic in traumatic pain, dull visceral pain, also to produce post-operative analgesia for induction in cardiac surgery for terminal cancer pain and fentanyl plus droperidol, this combination is used to produce a state of neurolept analgesia. Now what is neurolept analgesia? Analgesia we know is loss of pain sensation without affecting consciousness. Droperidol is a neuroleptic drug which makes the patient not bothered about the surroundings. A situation of neurolepsis. Fentanyl is also available as a transdermal patch. The next opioid congener or opioid <coughs> drug is methadone. Methadone is pharmacologically similar to morphine, that is, in terms of its effects on the CNS, the GIT, the cardiovascular system, histamine release, etc. Now why methadone is important is because of its differences in the pharmacokinetics when compared to morphine. It has a slow onset of action and a long duration of action. Methadone is effective orally. It binds to tissue proteins from where it is slowly released which accounts for its long duration of action. Now because of this long duration of action, the withdrawal symptoms produced are less severe. Tolerance to methadone develops more slowly when compared to morphine. Methadone is used primarily to treat opioid dependence. So what is done here in the treatment of morphine or opioid addiction? A gradual reduction in the opioid dose or morphine dose. Start methadone along with the tapering dose of morphine then morphine is stopped with a slow reduction in the dose of methadone and finally stop methadone. Now what happens because of this slow and long duration of action of methadone even after it is stopped 
it stays in the system for some time because it is bound to tissue proteins from where it is slowly released. Therefore, the withdrawal symptoms are much less. And finally, the opioid addict needs psychological support in the form of self-help groups like Narcotics Anonymous. A synthetic opioid, namely tramadol, in addition to having the morphine-like effects on the opioid receptors, namely mu, kappa and delta, tramadol also inhibits neuronal uptake of noradrenaline and 5-hydroxytryptamine. Compared to morphine, the dependence produced by tramadol is insignificant and is partially reversible by the antagonists. <coughs> Tramadol has very good oral bioavailability. Now again, compared to morphine, the respiratory depression, sedation, constipation and the effect on intrabiliary pressure are less. Side effects include dry mouth, sweating, nausea, giddiness and inducing sleep. Tramadol is used in medium intensity pain like traumatic injuries surgery pre and post op and in cancer pain codeine is chemically methyl morphine is less potent than morphine used as an anti tussive and an anti motility agent that is to suppress cough and to symptomatically stop diarrhea So the effect of codeine on gastrointestinal motility is it produces spastic constipation. Codeine is available as syrups and tablets. Codeine is also a drug of abuse since it is relatively easily available. Pentazosine is an agonist at the kappa receptors and a weak antagonist at the mu receptors. So, technically, pentazosine is a mixed agonist antagonist. That is, it is an agonist at kappa and antagonist at the mu receptors. Compared to morphine, pentazosine is less potent and less effective. Again, compared to morphine, the respiratory depression and sedation are less severe. Pentazosine causes an increase in heart rate and increase in blood pressure which are extremely dangerous in a patient with myocardial infarction. Therefore, pentazosine is contraindicated in myocardial infarction. Biliary spasm and constipation are less compared to morphine. Vomiting is less compared to morphine. Pentazosine produces euphoria in low doses and dysphoria and psychotomimetic effects in high doses. Because of this psychotomimetic and dysphoric effects of pentazosine, it is less likely to be abused. Coming to the adverse effects of pentazosine. Sweating, sedation and lightheadedness, nausea, vomiting, increase in blood pressure and heart rate which is dangerous in myocardial infarction. The mechanism of these two effects on the cardiovascular system are pentazosin causes the release of catecholamines. Therefore, pentazosin is a contraindicated in myocardial infarction. This is a short answer question in your exams. Like we said, pentazosin can cause dependence but less likely compared to morphine. Psychotomimetic effects are those effects which are described in terms of anxiety, nightmares, hallucinations and uncontrollable thoughts. Pentazosin is used in post-operative pain, chronic recurrent pain. <coughs> Buprenorphine is again an opioid analgesic which is synthetic and highly lipid soluble which means it crosses the blood-brain barrier and the placental barrier very easily. It is a partial agonist at the new receptors and a partial or mixed agonist antagonist. Slower onset and longer duration of action compared to morphine. Coming to the potency, buprenorphine is 20, 25, 30 times more potent than morphine. Sedation and subjective effects, 
that is the euphoria, the kick, the rush are similar to morphine. Buprenorphine can be used as a substitute at as a substitute at low levels to morphine and in withdrawal in addicts. Buprenorphine, because it is a partial agonist, is less likely to cause withdrawal symptoms which are delayed and less abuse potential. Adverse effects quite similar to morphine, that is nausea, vomiting, pinpoint pupil, hypotension, mild respiratory depression and dependence. Buprenorphine is used in cancer pain, in pre-anesthetic medication, myocardial infarction if morphine is not available and in relieving post-operative pain. Buprenorphine can also be administered sublingually. If you remember fentanyl transdermal patch, buprenorphine sublingual also. Coming to the opioid antagonists. The first one, these, are, these three drugs which we are going to describe are pure opioid antagonists. That is, they will completely block and also reverse to a certain extent the effects of the opioids. Naloxone is a pure antagonist at all three subtypes of opioid receptors, namely mu, kappa and delta. It has no agonistic activity, it's a pure antagonist. Naloxone has no perceivable effects in normal individuals. In case of overdose, it will antagonize or block the effects of morphine. If naloxone is given to an opioid addict, it will precipitate withdrawal symptoms. Naloxone also blocks the effects of endogenous opioids, namely the endorphins and enkephalins. Coming to the uses of naloxone. Naloxone is the specific antidote for morphine or opioid overdose and for reversing neonatal depression in a woman who has been addicted to morphine or, or who has been given an overdose of opioid at delivery. So the main uses of naloxone are in reversing the effects of neonatal respiratory depression and in opioid overdose. Also, naloxone can be used to diagnose opioid dependence. In a suspected opioid addict, if naloxone is given, it will precipitate withdrawal symptoms. And if opioids were used intraoperatively, postoperative immediately to reverse the respiratory depression caused by the opioids. Naloxone has been tried to relieve alcoholism or alcohol intoxication. Naltrexone is orally active. Naloxone is given only intravenous, well as naltrexone can be given orally. It is longer acting compared to naloxone and is used for what is called opioid blockade therapy. That is, a patient, who, an opioid addict, who has been now de-addicted and sent out, is put on oral naltrexone so that even if that addict tries to abuse opioid again, the effects will not be seen. Naltrexone has also been used to reduce alcohol craving. The major adverse effect of naltrexone is its hepatotoxicity. Nalmifen is a quite new opioid antagonist is very similar to naltrexone that is it is orally active longer acting used for opioid blockade therapy and to reduce alcohol craving difference being nalmifen is less hepatotoxic compared to naltrexone now these are some of the questions which are usually asked in your exams for example if you get a five mark question compare and contrast morphine and pethidine the answer should be under the following headings. Source or chemistry. What is the mechanism of action? What are the effects? Effect on histamine release. Whether it has antitussive property. What are the uses? What are the adverse effects? What is the specific antidote in case of poisoning? Thank you very much for your patient listening.
Thank <laughs> you.